Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I'd like to show you uh, two or three techniques that you can use to add glare to your renders to make them look more realistic. Because when you're taking a photograph, these super bright background areas, so you know the sky outside being super bright, we're taking a shot indoors, the exposure value is very low, because this is so bright, it has a tendency in photography to bleed out in the edges and sort of start invading our, our, our render, our photograph. And so what we need to do is replicate that effect digitally. And there are, of course, a few ways to do this. So first, I'd like to show you how to do it in Photoshop with a final render. And then we're going to go into 3D Studio Max, and I'll show you how you can do it in Mental Ray using the glare camera shader. So let's get started here. If I were to do this, I would take a look here and I would say, all right, so which parts of this image are super bright? Well, definitely the, the white parts of these windows here and then a little bit out here because it's reflecting outside the sky. So I'm going to hop up here to select and go down to color range and I'm going to select that white. So everything that's white, I'm going to grab. I'm just going to kind of tweak this a little bit. I might say, uh, okay, uh, that about covers it. So I've grabbed all these windows and then a small section out here in this glass. I'd create a new layer and I'd call it glare. And this new layer, I would fill it with with bright with just white. So I'd hit uh, D and then that gives me my white swatch in the background and I just hit control delete. And that's filled that layer with white. So you can see it there, I'm just moving it around. So it's filled that layer with white. And now all I have to do is go up to filter blur and then Gaussian blur and I might only want uh, maybe 20 pixels of blur roughly 20 pixels and there you have it I'm done I just added a little bit of blur spilling through the windows it looks convincing enough and this was a, a relatively cheap effect I didn't even have to uh, wait for any kind of rendering but let's say you did let's say you did want this to be computed not off of the final colors, not off of, you know, plain old white, but you want it based off of the actual brightness of those pixels. That's when you need the glare shader. So let's hop back over to, to Studio Max and I'll show you how that works. So this is my scene. I've gone ahead and already uh, baked in my final gather and, and I'm blocking off half of the render so that you can see the glare effect versus the, the unaltered render. So you can find the glare shader the glare camera shader in your render setup panel hotkey F10 under your renderer tab and if you scroll down under the camera effects rollout down to camera shaders you'll find it it's right here the output shader this default output shader is the glare shader so I'm gonna go ahead and enable it I'm gonna click that checkbox and I'm gonna re-render and you can see the effect you can see what this looks like right off the bat using the default values okay so it's kind of a cheesy effect uh, immediately right this is way too strong it's not convincing um, but it does a very interesting thing right the blending is is variable depending on the brightness and that's something we can't really replicate with Photoshop so let's tone down the effect let's make it more subtle uh, and really make this into something that's even better than than what we could do in Photoshop so in order to edit this, uh, the parameters for this shader, I need to open up my material editor and drag and drop it into an empty slot as an instance. So I'm going to click OK. Now I don't think I have time to go through each one of these parameters, but I'm just going to show you the two most important. The first is the spread, which is this one right here, the second one down. By default, it's set to 2.0, but we can set it to 1, and that should make the effect more subtle. I'm going to go ahead and render to show you what that looks like. There we go. It's much more gentle now. Much more gentle. Bounces off the ceiling a little bit. Very subtle. This is exactly what you would want for a final render. But let me show you the other feature, and this one is actually the best of both worlds. You get the control of Photoshop and the accuracy of this camera shader. When you click on Replace Rendered Image with Glare Only, which is the checkbox down here at the bottom, 
What that does is it renders you an entire fresh layer that only contains the glare effect. So it, it completely removes the entire image. And this is useful because you can render it like a render element and bring it out into Photoshop or into your compositing program and then apply that effect yourself. So I'm going to actually make this spread a little bit higher, 1.5, and we're going to render and see what this looks like here, the whole view. Wonderful. So now you can see, right, I've got the effect only, that, that blue haze outside. So I can just copy this image. I'm going to bring it over here into Photoshop, remove my original glare. And I'm going to hit Control V, and that's going to copy in this new layer. Now it's black uh, with, with white f for the highlights. So what we need to do is set this to screen as the blending mode. And there we go. This looks exactly the same as it would as if I had uh, made it the final effect here. If I hadn't check, uh, checked this checkbox and I had let Studio Max composite it for me, it would look just like this. But the difference here is that I can do things like apply a layer mask. Or I could change the color. I could say, you know, um, gosh, you know, I don't want these windows to be quite as brightly, uh, you know, tinted. I could, I could mask out one of these windows if I wanted to. You can really do just about anything now that you have the ability to mask the effect and change it to your liking. So until next week, I encourage you to play around with this. Try it out see what it can do for you. It's a very powerful effect um, and when you use it in conjunction with a compositing program like Photoshop it becomes that much more robust and powerful for you. Don't forget to tune in next week for another Monday movie. Until then, happy rendering.